Let us now resume with chapter 35 of Around the World in 80 Days by Hulier Vierne. As we had discussed earlier, now unfortunately for Fogg, he happens to reach London five minutes late. He reaches at 8.50 and 8.45 p.m. was the time when the bet was to get over. The time of the bet was to get over. The wager was to get over in which he had taken up the bet of traveling around the world in 80 days. Unfortunately, since he reaches at 8.50, he automatically uh, loses a chance of winning the bet. So now things are uh, in a very uh, bad state for Fogg, Pasipatu as well as Oda. We see that uh, Seven Row is the locality that is in the beginning of chapter 35. We come across Seven Row that is the area, the locality where Fogg lives, his residential area. Now here in this house of Fogg, you cannot know that people have returned back from the journey and are actually living in the house because all the doors and windows of the house are shut. Uh, you can't see any activity going on inside the house as well because everybody is very gloomy, very depressed rest okay naturally i mean it's very natural since they have lost such a huge bet now uh, even after coming to civil row and living inside the house this huge bungalow that uh, fog possesses owns there cannot be seen any activity going on like people outside living in that particular area wouldn't even be aware of the fact that Phileas Fogg along with his valet Pasipatu has returned back to London okay and uh, Phileas Fogg tells Pasipatu to quietly go to a nearby provision store, uh, buy the groceries and other necess uh, the essential provisions that are required for them to sustain themselves, okay, and bring it quietly. Of course, Pasipatu is more than willing. He too obliges master. Now, at this time, we still don't see uh, fog reacting in a bad way he is not at all angry on anyone he seems to be very calm and composed and all the time the only thing that is haunting fog is that how he could have lost this bet because of no fault of his isn't it like he starts remembering he starts thinking of the number of hurdles that he had to encounter that he had to face when he was traveling around the world and how he was able to easily overcome each obstacle overcome each hurdle and in spite of that at the end when it was the last lag the last part of his journey about which he was not even aware that such a problem was going to crop up was going to come all of a sudden this problem crops up and he is held up at liverpool where uh, detective fix stops him from going onwards arrests him from uh, taking his onward journey and unnecessarily he wastes so much of time and thereby is not able to reach the destination of London on time. So all these uh, different thoughts are continuously going across in his mind. They are haunting him. They are driving him nuts. But in spite of everything, he keeps himself totally cool, totally calm and composed. He is also aware of the fact that now he doesn't have any money left with him because uh, going on this journey cost him a lot of money. Okay, He had to pay a lot of money for bearing all the expenses, to bear all the expenditures and um, plus the only amount that was left with him was the 20,000 pounds 
uh, which he had kept safely in his bank account and at bearings okay and he had written a check for the other members of the reform club saying that if he happens to lose the bet the wager of traveling of traversing the world in 80 days then this 20000 pounds that he had would automatically go to the other members of the reform club so once this 20000 pounds are taken away by the other members of the reform club then poor mr fogg would be left with almost nothing so in a way uh, we also become aware at this point that this particular journey that was undertaken by fog was not done for the sake of money earning money was not his prerogative that was not his aim that was not his purpose but it was only for the sake of his honor okay he had his own self respect he had his own pride and for the sake of his honor he had undertaken to go on this journey he had taken up this bet which unfortunately he happened to lose and now uh, we see that uh, okay uh, now uh, we have seen that there is this room and now he knows that uh, uh, he has also brought along with him auda okay the indian princess who he had rescued from india so there is an added responsibility also on his shoulders which he needs to take care of so he decides to give one portion of his house one particular area to uh auda and that is where he has kept her right now as well he knows that she is his responsibility so and he is contemplating he is thinking of what he is going to do with her now because he is left with absolutely no money and earlier when he had decided to bring her along with him he was 100% sure of winning the bet he would have got a huge amount of money and he would have been easily able to take care of auda as well he would have placed her in another house maybe set her up properly you know so that she could also live her life in a smooth way all right but now that is another thing also i feel that is bothering him that is troubling him at this point so uh now auda knows that uh, fog is going through hell okay and uh, she is quite worried for him because uh, she has started developing feelings for him it's very natural because it is this man who had this man of course as well as pase patu who had rescued her from getting self immolated because she was asked to jump on the pyre and kill herself okay because her husband who was the raja had died now that was the custom in the olden days that was followed that was practiced in india so uh, she is greatly um, indebted to fog all right and she doesn't want fog to go through all this misery and all this suffering okay and she feels slightly guilty as well maybe that okay in case he had not met me or come across me he would have also been able to save some more time and he would not have had to lose the bet okay that must have been playing in the mind of auda and auda was also aware of the fact that sometimes these british englishmen uh tended to do something very very naive okay and uh, she was afraid that where fog out of sheer despair might end up committing suicide or something i mean that was one uh, one uh, question or maybe that was one point that was continuously haunting auda so uh, auda tells uh, pase patu who is of course fog's uh, valet that he should be with fog 24 by 7 not to ever ever uh, take his take his eyes off fog keep him in close uh, proximity stay close to him take care of his whereabouts see what he is doing so 
Pase Patu, of course, was going to listen to what Auda told him. And as a consequence of that, you see that Pase Patu keeps a close watch on a fog, all right? He even at times, you know, he, uh, since a fog is literally spending most of the time, most of his time inside his private room. So, at times, fall, uh, Pasipatu tends to get a little bit worried. So, he happens to peep from the keyhole, you know, and tries to check on fog to see that everything is fine, that his master is safe. Okay, so now in this uh, period of time, uh, during this course of time, you see that nobody is able to sleep and that is very natural. Neither Auda is able to sleep nor Fog gets any sleep. He is equally restless and so is Pasipatu. All of them keep awake practically the whole night. Now, uh, it's the next morning. Okay, um... Fog calls Pasipatu and tells him that he wanted uh, Pasipatu to deliver a message to uh, Auda te uh, telling her to excuse him for not being there uh, to have breakfast with her. Okay, and he also tells Pasipatu to provide breakfast for Auda and to get something, a tea and maybe some something in meat for himself as well. And he also tells Pasipatu to give this message to Auda that uh, today evening around 7.30ish, uh, he would like to uh, meet Auda in the drawing room if possible. I mean, if she is free and if it is okay with her, he wanted to have a word with Auda. Uh, Pasipatu is more than willing to oblige okay and um, during this course of time we also get to see the reaction of Pasipatu. Pasipatu is extremely uh, feeling guilty, is feeling depressed, is very low because all the time this thought is haunting him that it is because of him, his mistakes, his errors, his folly that his master fog has landed in this problem, in this difficult situation. If only he had warned fog about the real intentions of Detective Fix, maybe uh, uh, fog would not have agreed to take uh, to take Fix along with them from Liverpool. Uh, uh, from the earlier part of the journey to Liverpool and thereby Detective Fix would not have been able to arrest Fogg and Fogg would have eventually been able to complete his journey within the stipulated period of time. So, and since his master is not punishing him, not shouting at him, not getting angry at him, that is driving him more crazy. You know, he is being eaten up by his own guilt. All right, guilt conscience rather. So he cannot uh, withhold it any longer. And there, therefore, all of a sudden he bursts out in front of Fogg saying, Master, why don't you punish me? Why are you not cursing me? Why are you not getting angry on me? Even after knowing the fact that it was because of my carelessness, my stupidity that you have landed up in such a big mess. But Fogg is, as I told you earlier, a thorough gent gentleman. Okay, He is a wonderful human being kind at heart okay and he loves Pasipatu so therefore he says Pasipatu please do not think that you are at fault I am fault I am not blaming anyone I take the sole responsibility of me not being able to complete my journey of traversing around the world in 80 days so off you go he says come on go and deliver my message to Auda so of course, Pasipatu has no choice, but he has to listen to what his master is telling him. And he goes and knocks on Oda's door. Oda instantly opens the door 
and um, then Pasipatu tells Oda that this is the message that uh, the master has asked me to convey to you that uh, right now he would not be able to join you for breakfast but he would much appreciate it if she could uh, share her company with the master for dinner around 7.30 in the evening. And Pasipatu also goes on to add, telling Auda that I have tried my best to get master out of the depression to ask him to come out of the room. But somehow I have not been able to succeed. So I request you, I am sure you can do better than me. To which Auda replies, come on. Whatever makes you think that when he is not listening to his own valet, to you who has been with him for quite some time, he is going to listen to me. Like I have been constantly trying to get his attention. I have been constantly trying to tell him about my feelings for him. But till now he has not reciprocated reciprocated it in any way so whatever makes you think that he is going to listen to me now she says no i don't think i have the courage to say anything to um fog so she says just let us just leave it as it is the only thing i can request you to do right now is you keep a watch on your master and see that he does not do anything untoward does not do anything stupid anything foolish so and yeah she says that she would be delighted to join him for dinner uh, after saying this passe patu goes out from there and you see that now Auda comes into a pensive mood. It is written there. Now when we say pensive means uh, she is now contemplating. She is now thinking. Okay. She is in a serious mood. She is meditating on what is the next course of action that she is supposed to take because even she is so unsure about her future she doesn't know what is going to happen now what is for going to talk to her in the evening is he going to ask her to leave is he going to allow her to continue to live in this house because even she is very well aware of the fact that he is totally broken he does not have any money with him how is he going to survive and on the other hand how is he going to be able to take care of her and also during the course of time as we read the novel we also come across the fact that um Auda has started developing feelings for fog she has slowly started falling in love with him but of course it is unladylike for her to propose first she is waiting to uh, get some kind of indication or some kind of sign from uh, fog so that she can reciprocate her love to him okay but uh, unfortunately since fog is not reacting in that manner she just has to keep quiet and wait for the evening when they both are going to get a chance to speak with each other face to face now um that time comes okay um, in the course of the time, you see that, you know, Pasipatu is all the time, uh, you see in the novel, it is written that, you know, he is in a state of uh, total dilemma. He's not at peace at all. So he's continuously running on the staircase. Sometimes he's running upstairs. Sometimes he's coming down because he's totally confused. He just doesn't know what to do. So now uh, we come across the situation okay we move forward and yeah okay now it is evening uh one second give me a second uh it is saturday the 21st of december at a quarter to nine when uh uh as phileas fogg had not appeared in the saloon on the evening before that was the saturday the 21st of december at 
quarter to nine when he was supposed to reach that was a time when he was going to win the bet if he would have won the bet that was a time when he had to report to uh, the saloon okay that is at the reform club but now that he is not gone there uh, it was a routine for fog to go every evening to the reform club okay that was a routine that he had developed in the course of time but unfortunately after he has lost the bet he has no intention no interest of going to the club so it is precisely that time of the evening hours when he needs to go to the club but because he has lost the bet he doesn't want to go to the club. Now, the only reason why he would have had to go to the club was to pay the £20,000 that he was owing his friends. But even that check had already been prepared and kept in advance. He had signed the check and uh, placed it with his friends, telling them that all they had to do was they had to go to the bearings and to deposit the check from where they could easily get the amount of £20,000, which he had told he would have to pay in case he had lost the bet now obviously he knew uh, since the check had already been given to his friends at the reform club there was no reason for him to go to the club so he was sitting he was staying at home all the time now uh, it is evening hours and um, precisely at 7 30 as fog had promised uh, uh, auda that he would want to have a word with her he wanted to speak to her so he asks her, uh, he first goes to the drawing room and uh, sits himself, places himself just across the fireplace, okay? And then he is waiting for Oda to come. Uh, he sends um, Pasipatu to Oda's room to ask her to come down so that he can actually have a talk with Oda. Oda is already waiting for him. So Oda comes down and sits opposite to Fog. And they both start talking. They both start having this conversation. Now, uh, it is... Um, okay. For several minutes after Oda has come, Fog does not know how to start talking. Okay. He is a little bit uh, tongue-tied, you can say. Or he doesn't know how to begin the conversation. He is a little bit nervous himself. So, several minutes pass when both of them are sitting quietly in their drawing room. And then, finally, uh, it is um, Fog who says, Okay, uh, please let me finish. All right. All right. So, uh, Fog asks, uh, Fog tells uh, Auda that I am really sorry and you have to pardon me for having bringing you to London. So Auda is a little bit surprised. She says, come on, why are you asking me to pardon you? Uh, you have not done anything wrong by bringing me to London. In fact, you did me a huge favor. You have saved me from getting killed. So there's nothing for you to ask pardon for. So he says, no, when I had brought you to London, I was in a much better financial position and least expecting that the time would come, such a time would come when I would not be able to take care of you. But he tells her that you needn't worry. He still had uh, you know, a little amount of money left with him and he told her not to worry about it and he would see to it that he would place her in a resp in this respectable society in a proper manner. He was still willing to take care of her and he asks her not to worry about anything. Now, Oda on the other hand says that, come on, uh, it is not your fault at all for whatever conspired, for whatever happened, okay? Uh, she says that somewhere she feels she is also to be blamed in a way for him having gotten delayed. Because if you remember in the earlier episodes in my last presentation where I had discussed the entire plot of Around the World in 80 Days, I had told you that uh, when they were um, uh, moving towards, uh, you know, when I think it was in Calcutta, when um, uh, the, their guide, the Parsi guide of uh, Phileas Fogg, uh, 
informs Fogg and uh, Pasipatu that there is this procession that is going through the road and where uh, the Raja has uh, died and the procession was taking Oda who was a young Indian princess and she was going to be asked to jump in the pyre, the burning lit pyre where she had to also give herself up because her husband had died and it was Fogg and Pasipatu who happened to save Oda. So all this uh, fiasco that takes place also takes up a lot of time okay maybe a few days as well a couple of days where they are able to rescue Auda and then escape with her so Auda says that even she is to blame in part for the misfortune that finally happened to Fogg because if it had not been for them having come across this procession maybe he would have been able to save a day more and therefore he would have been able to win the bet. So she says that she is equally responsible for the delay so he should not blame himself in any way. So after this so uh, Fogg tells her that he just does not know like what he is supposed to do right now okay and she says that uh, you need to share your grief your burdens your problems with somebody because uh, yeah so he says Fogg says he does not have anybody else in his life so Fogg she says Oda says come on you must be having your family somebody in your family he says I've got nobody then she says what about some of your friends so he says I have no friends I have no company anymore so Oda says that uh, it is really sad to hear this and uh, if you have someone with whom you are able to share your grief your sorrow then that automatically becomes half now she says that if he wants he can share his grief with her and she is ready to listen to him okay now uh, on listening this um Auda, uh, gets up from her seat and uh, goes towards Fogg and tells him that if you are ready to accept me as your companion and as your friend for life, I would propose to get married to you. Oh my God, you cannot imagine uh, the reaction of Fogg at that moment. Earlier, he seemed to be very calm, very composed. And the moment he hears that Auda herself is proposing to him, his eyes that up till now seem to be very dull, okay? He seemed to be very depressed, upset, you know, somehow. Uh, suddenly, his eyes tend to light up, okay? They become very bright. And he seems to, his face seems to radiate. He seems to become very happy, all of a sudden and uh, at this point we also realize the fact that even in his own heart heart of hearts even he had started developing some kind of feelings for Auda but he was a little bit uh, you know afraid of uh, telling about his feelings openly to her but now that she herself has come forward and proposed to him he immediately accepts the a proposal and tells Oda that he would be more than delighted to be her life partner. Both of them are really happy, very excited with, uh, you know, knowing that now they are going to share the rest of their life together. So immediately Fogg calls for um, Pasipatu and when Pasipatu enters the room, he sees that Fogg and Oda are holding hands and both of them are smiling and seem very joyful. So automatically he puts two and two together and understands that now they have decided to spend their lives together. So at this time, uh, Fogg asks uh, Pasipatu that if it is not too late, could he please call for a priest? Now, who is the priest that he wants to call for? Is Reverend Samuel Williams. That is the priest over here of uh, Mary Lebone uh, Parish that he asks Pasipatu to rush off and call for the priest so that they can immediately exchange their vows, take their vows and decide to get married the 
next day that is on monday as they are assuming today to be sunday so uh, pase patu is very happy for both of them for his master as well as for oda and he tells them okay so both of you decide to get married on monday that is the next day as they think that today is a sunday so uh, fox says yes we both decide have decided that tomorrow being monday we want to immediately get married and therefore uh, pase patu says okay he will immediately go and search for reverend samuel williams and confirm the date and fix the date of tomorrow that is monday when he would want um, fog to get married to oda so he rushes off okay he rushes off outside several row that is the house of uh, fog and in search of uh, uh, reverend that is the priest samuel williams who would get uh, fog and um auda married the next day okay now this brings us to the end of chapter 35 in my next video i will be dealing with the next chapter that is chapter 36 and 37 I hope you all have been able to follow everything that I have tried to explain here in the most simplest and easiest way okay listen to both um, the chapters once again to get more clarity of it and whenever my whenever i post my next video continuing with the other chapters please see to it that you have you watch the other video after watching my first two chapters that is 34 and 35 so that you get the continuity in chapter number 36 and 37 thank you so much for watching and do continue learning and studying okay studying is and learning is a continuous process all right and wish you all the best for your 12th board examinations